The three tools we have for circuit analysis are current loops, voltage nodes, and thevenins. The previous two videos we demonstrated that current loops and voltage nodes works with complex numbers just like do with real numbers. Today looking at thevenins, and not too surprisingly, thevenin equivalents also work with complex numbers. Again, as a reminder, for voltages, a basic representation of a voltage, the real is cosine minus j is sine. R's don't change, inductors become j omega L, and capacitors become 1 over j omega C. If I have a circuit like this, I want to find the Thevenin equivalent. Same thing we did before. When I look in, I'll see a Thevenin voltage and a Thevenin impedance, except that now I'm going to get complex numbers. What we want to look at is find the Thevenin equivalent for a circuit, find the resistance for the max power transfer, and the maximum power to the load. Same thing we did at DC. To find the Thevenin impedance, what you do is you turn off the source and then analyze. Looking in, I see 6 plus J10 to ground, in parallel with 20 ohms to ground, in parallel with minus J30 to ohms to ground. Going back to our trusty HP calculator, that would just be 6 plus J10, 6 enter 10 complex, in parallel with 20 ohms, in parallel with minus J30, so it's minus J30 inverse, take the total, that's 8.98 plus J3.88 ohms. So voila, you get the Thevenin equivalent. Okay, uh, the Thevenin voltage. I can use voltage division. Take these two in parallel, and it's going to be Z1 over Z1 plus Z2. Again, with our trusty HP, I'll put these two in parallel, 20 ohms in parallel with minus J30. Inverse plus inverse. You see 13 minus J9 ohms. That's your Z1 over Z1 plus Z2. Push that on the stack a couple times. Add 6 plus J10. Add those together. That's the denominator. Now take the ratio times 100. That's feed thevenin. 67 minus J49. Note that with an HP calculator, these calculations are just as easy as they were at DC. HPs handle complex numbers just like they do with real numbers. Very easy to use. When all said and done, this is my Thevenin equivalent. I have a Thevenin voltage and a Thevenin impedance. This is called Z Thevenin since it's complex. It's just a Thevenin impedance. Um, however, these numbers are complex. Suppose I want to find max power transfer. I need to define power and, and AC. At DC, power is volts times amps, which is also V squared over R, or I squared R. For AC, depends upon your units. In AC, I've got peak to peak, peak, and RMS. If you're using RMS units, the equations are just like they are at DC. Power is volts times amps. We're using the RMS voltage and RMS current. The slight catch is the current is the complex conjugate of current. Um, if I substitute, B equals IR, or B equals I times Z. It's also the RMS voltage squared, the amplitude squared, times the impedance, or the amplitude of the RMS voltage squared divided by the complex conjugate of impedance. If you prefer peak voltage, then you have to divide by a half, and divide by two. When you have complex power, I've got two parts, the real and complex part. The real part is the work done. That's the power being produced by the motor, the heat coming out of the resistor, the complex part is just energy bouncing back and forth, typically between the inductance and capacitance in the circuit. To find the max power to the load, it's slightly different than DC. At DC, the load equals the Thevenin impedance. For AC, it's actually a complex conjugate. The reason being is I want to have the real part match up. This will also be 8.968 ohms. If this is the complex conjugate, minus j 3.8 ohms, the complex part cancels. By canceling the complex part, the impedance drops and you get more current. More current produces more power. So for AC, the load is the complex conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. Uh, to implement 8 minus j 3.8, 
I can do it in two ways. I could do a series uh, circuit or parallel. Series, this would just be 8.96 ohms and minus J3.8 ohms. And parallel, I can also do it. Parallel is actually what you normally use in, for utilities. I've got the resistance, the load, that's the customer. And I'm going to add some capacitors at the end of the transmission line. The capacitor is trying to cancel the transmission line impedance, the inductance that the, the line sees. To find these two, I want the impedance, the series of impedance, to be 8.96 minus J3.8. In parallel, that's going to be the total impedance, 1 over Z load, which is the 8.9 plus J3.8, is equal to the resistance plus capacitance. Or, yep. Uh, taking the real part, the real part is 10.6, complex part is minus 24. With our trusty HP calculator, that's actually fairly easy to do. The parallel impedance is 8.968 real 3.838 negative complex. That's 1 over R plus 1 over JX inverse. 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 Something like that. So take the inverse. In parallel, the admittance is at 1 over R adds. That's 1 over R. That's 1 over JX. So let's do complex. What that did is that just pulled off the real part and complex part. That's my JX. JX should be um, 24. And the real part is 10 ohms. So with the HP, I can pull off the resistance and capacitance pretty easily. The power to the load is then the voltage to the load, V squared over Z. To get the voltage, use voltage division. It's going to be R1 over R1 plus R2. Note these are complex conjugates. Times the voltage. Multiply them out, I get a complex number. The power is the magnitude of the voltage squared over Z. Assuming the units are RMS, that will be the magnitude of 23 minus J29 squared over the impedance conjugate which is 4.2 minus J1.8 watts. The real part is power to the load. The J term is power that's bouncing back and forth. There's a saying in utilities that capacitors add voltage. What that is is if I have a transmission line, typically the load is inductive from all the motors attached to the power grid. If I have a customer over here that's drawing some power, the voltage will dip. If I add capacitors at the end of the transmission line, the voltage goes up. What's happening is capacitors have a negative reactance. Inductances for motors have a plus reactance. By adding capacitors, I'm canceling this. By canceling it, I increase the current, which increases the voltage. That only works up to a point. Once I've added enough capacitance to cancel the entire reactance part, adding more capacitors makes things actually worse. So up to a point, if I add capacitors, this is going right to left, the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over J omega C, so when C equals 0, the impedance is infinity. As I increase the capacitance, the voltage actually does go up slightly. It's the maximum when the capacitor cancels the reactance. Anything more than that actually makes things worse. So capacitors do add voltage on transmission lines. Not a lot, but a little bit. You can also use source transformations with complex numbers. Here the trick would be Convert from Thevenin to Norton, back to Thevenin, back to Norton, and vice versa. Except now I'm going to be using complex numbers. To illustrate, I'll take the voltage source, 100 volts and 5 plus J 10 ohms, convert to Norton. The resistance stays the same. The voltage becomes V over R, uh, 4 minus J8. I can now put these in parallel, combine them and convert back to voltage. In parallel, the impedance is 7.8 plus J8 ohms. The Thevenin resistance is the same. The Thevenin voltage is I times R. It becomes 98 minus J29 ohms. These now add in series. These I can put in parallel is 38 minus J28 ohms. Then by voltage division is what I'm measuring, 38 plus J28 over the total times the voltage, that's your Thevenin voltage. The Thevenin impedance 
are minus j80 and parallel 60 and parallel with all these. Putting it all together, I get a complex number. This is my V-thevenin, the complex voltage, and there's your Z-thevenin, complex impedance. So again, everything we did at DC still works, except now we're using complex numbers.